Oh, hello there. Welcome back. Episode 11, Stuck in the Nail. I'm Daft. That's Echo. You By now, you probably should know the gig. Right? You probably should know. So, <laughs> episode Maybe. 11. Maybe. This we, is Stuck in the Nail. We literally just said the simple stuff sometimes needs to be stated. So, yeah, well, I'm we'll, Echo. Yeah, that's Echo. I'm Daft. <laughs> <laughs> just to state the simple stuff. Uh, but that's true. Simple stuff needs to be stated. So, here's another simple fact for you. Stuck in the Nail is the only podcast in the world centered around ground combat in the game of Star Citizen. We got some good shit for you today. We're going to be talking about... If I carry the one, that equation checks. Carry the one? Yep. Well, well, we we got some people we'll we'll cross-check that with, but yeah. Simple math. Hey, numbers guys. Yeah, all right. Hey, the numbers guys are going to run it for us. Make sure it's good. Run the numbers. Yep. We're the only one. (laughs) So yeah, I uh, hope everybody's doing Improved. well. I hope 2022 is is uh, just blessing you with abundance. Um, Dude, it's not shitty. This it's not it's so far not shitty. It's not a shitty right? year. Like in reality, like on the on a grand sh- scheme, it's not yeah. shitty. Like you might be having like that person listening might have a shitty time. Sorry, yeah. but uh, as a whole, not too bad. 2022. Yeah, it's it's going it's going okay. We'll see what uh, surprises come our way. But <laughs> well, let's hope not. Knock on wood. Um, but yeah, we, we got some good stuff for you today. We're going to be talking about individual actions. Okay. In the game of star citizen as pertaining to first person shooter aspects, how can you best survive and defeat enemies and work as a team and be in the right place at the right time with the right equipment? You've probably heard me say that a lot. Um, but that's important shit. So, uh, let's dive right in. What, what is on your mind? Hold on, oh, I have a oh, question. Oh, oh, sorry. I thought teamwork was the most important thing in combat. Why now are we discussing <clears throat> individual actions? Oh, great question. I'll probably just ha- toss I mean, this back to you because I know you want to riff on this. But yeah, no, no, I mean, I genuinely don't know why individual <clears throat> actions are All important right. to the team mechanics. So a wise man once told me, I forgot who it was. It was some some higher ranking Marine that I forgot your name. Sorry. But he, he said to me that the team, the outcome of a team is the accumulation of everybody's individual actions. That's a part of that team. And he said it differently and probably more eloquently with, with probably like five pounds of dip in his mouth at the same time. He said that, <laughs> that man, I got my wish, you gotta do that shit. You know, you know how they talk. I, I can't with four days of heat rash from his uh, kit. Yeah, yeah exactly. So basically, your individual actions as a team, if you have five individuals in a team, you got Johnny, Larry, Susie, Billy, and Chow, right? Because, you know, you got to be diverse. So we got those five guys, and they all, all of their individual actions add up to a either negative or positive outcome for that group, that team. It doesn't matter if you're playing badminton or you're, you know, kicking indoors somewhere, or just clicking pixels in a video game, right? It's those individual actions add up, and they equal the sum total of a team's success. So hopefully, does that answer your question, Echo? It does. (laughs) I had to carry the one on that for it to make sense, but it Mm -hmm. does, yeah, that that math does check. Yeah, no, it's, I like, that's something that's often forgotten or not even forgotten, just misunderstood when you talk about team mechanics, right? Is that um, the, the individual, what you do as an individual in your team can and will have an impact on the team's outcome, right? Mm-hmm. So if you are, for example, running around like it's Star Marine in the verse, then, and you're not covering, you're not providing cover fire, you're not communicating, you're not moving with your team. Yes. Okay. Cool. You cleared SPK by yourself, but your whole team died. Yeah. Exactly. So, did you really win? Because now the four other people on your team have to respawn, get rekitted, come back. You have to spend logistics on that. When if you just slowed down and helped protect your team, you might only lost one guy. Yeah. Or a far more likely scenario as well that we've all experienced recently probably is trying to go to jump town by yourself. And there's a, there's an actual team that's working together and Mm -hmm. you're not going to get very far. And I think that's the direction star citizens going, you know, if 
Your individual actions can only surmount to so much. You could be the best first-person pixel clicker in the whole world. You could be the best at understanding Star Citizen mechanics. But nine times out of ten, if you're smart, you're going to run from a coordinated team. You're going to run from just a team. They don't even have to be that coordinated, you know, because numbers, because yep. reality. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, if you got an Idris and you don't have cool. a team. Hey, can we just get, hold on one second. Everybody who self-purchased an Idris, can we just give you a, a round of applause? Good job. You own the biggest ship in the game. Dope. And you're not in an org. So yeah. good luck. Well, if you are in an org. And you plan to use it. That's awesome. But if you're not, and you're wondering why you bought an Idris, come here. We'll tell you why. Or come come with us. We'll use your Idris. <laughs> if, you yeah. know, later. But, yeah. We'll it, make it effective. Yes. There's a limit. And hopefully you can substitute real teammates with NPCs in the future and pay them. But uh, nothing will beat a coordinated team. Exactly. That That's a good, and that's a great caveat. Like, Yes, you will be able to hire NPCs to fly your ship. You still have to control those NPCs. You still have to tell them what you want them to do. And the way that you interact with those NPCs, I don't know how many of you out there have played other games that have AI that you control. That's not a simple task, right? No. Like maybe the turret gunner, sure, but like... And then know. you got the bugs. Yeah, <laughs> like... I'll take a human over an NPC any day. The whole idea of hiring NPCs is bananas to me, but I guess yeah. teach their own. I could see it being used for like mundane tasks, like logistical stuff where you're like transporting a lot of shit somewhere like to make money. I don't know how the supplement loading cargo. Why even play the game then? Yeah. But, but the thing is I would only use NPCs to do like a mundane task like that while I have real players pulling security with guns, like watch yeah. being a good enjoyed. mixture of it could be a good thing. A mixture. Yeah. I want to so go back to your, I want to go back to your, uh, we're talking about individual actions, right? Yeah. Uh, I want to talk to a uh, talk about your junk town. Um, sure. Uh, knowledge there. So that coordinated team that you're that this pixel clicker of the year award and star citizen player is going to uh, attack. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's break that team down a little bit. What is that? Yeah. I mean, that's a team, right? That's a coordinated team that's working together to uh, to achieve a singular goal, which is, as I'm assuming, make money at Jump Town, right? Yeah, control the skies, control the ground, make the money, get so out safe. What do I have to do as an individual to contribute to a team? Mm -hmm. What are what are some things that I could do to be a contributing member of an effective team at Jump Town? Well, if we're talking about Star Citizen, let's break it down to, like, the very bottom of it, right? Sure. Because, like, Star Citizen is unique in the fact that you don't have to level up your character like a, like a World of Warcraft type or, like, a Skyrim to, like, be useful. You know, everybody's at the base stats. We all run the same. We do the same shit. Like, it's our knowledge and understanding and our skill set in the game that actually sets people apart, knowing you know, certain things like about ships, about weapons, about armor, about whatever you could fill in the blank. And so I think the very first individual action is like being like learning, learning the game or like being willing to learn as well. That those goals pair mm -hmm. together. So like everyone has to have a basic understanding of like, how do I call a ship? How do I get in a ship? How do I put armor and inventory? How do I use my inventory? Right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, like, at the very basic level, just to get that out of the way, like, you should have a basic understanding of the game. And we'll dive deep into inventory, too, because there's so many, like, individual actions, like tips and tricks that you can do as an individual to increase your readiness and to increase your effectiveness oh, yeah. in helping your team. So that's what I would say at the very base level if, if, with this example, that team at Jump Town or any situation, that team is right. just having a basic understanding of the game. Or at least knowing how first-person shooters work. Like, I aim and I click and I reload, right? So if that's mm -hmm. in place, which I'm assuming it is, <laughs> that's there. Um, so the next thing is just, like, understanding your role and your team, right? Unless, am I missing something? What do you think the next step up from that? That very basic knowledge? Yeah, so that's a good point. Roll and, and bill it, right? What does that mean in terms of that example of jump uh, of uh, Jumptown, right? So... Mm -hmm. 
uh, let's say me, you, and four of our friends decide that we're going to go and take over Jump Town, what are some places and things that we would need to do to be able to, let's say, secure that from the inside and be productive in getting those drugs to a ship? Sure. So someone would have to know their their individual actions. Like, this is how you know. You got to classify yeah. an individual action. Like, everyone Usually has to- classified individual actions are, are, are boiled into billets, billets. or roles, right? Yeah. That's why you see in other military games, uh, a machine gunner, a gra- like any type of class you could select in a video game is usually a billet. Yeah, um, It's a set of individual actions and a set of tools that can help your team, right? So those individual actions will change per billet. But like at the basic rifleman level, if you're in a team on the ground, like there's there's individual actions you should do no matter what weapon system you have or what. And it's like situational awareness stuff. So if Huge. I see that there's a gap or like, hey, nobody is guarding this door at Jump Town or no one is outside, you know, scanning the area with, with a scope or something like that. So understanding situational awareness is a huge individual action. Um, yeah. Echo, have you ever seen, like, uh, you, you watch hockey all the time, right? Like Gretzky's the greatest. Hell yeah. Right? Other athletes, like you look at these uh, pro soccer players or, or football players. Like um, mm-hmm. Ronaldo and shit, like dude, there, there's a, a any sport you play, there's this thing called field presence, right? You just mm-hmm. you've worked so well with your team, you know exactly where they are, and they can do that behind the back pass, you know, or make that slap shot, whatever it is. That that's a skill, it's right? A skill. The behind the back pass is a skill, but the responsibility of the guard is to stay at the top, right? Yeah, yeah, to, to be you know ready. Mean? For a pass. That's an individual right. action. He's in the right place mm-hmm. at the right time with the right equipment uh, or the mm-hmm. right skills to make that shot happen, right? Um, so that's like very first situational awareness is, is like understanding where you are and where your team is. That's that's yeah. huge. And it's so simple that nobody talks about it. Like you were saying before we kicked this recording off. Yeah. We need to state the simple stuff. Because, you know, you once you understand it and you can talk about those simple things that might not have been stated or they just get glossed over because we all know certain terminology and we just kind of gloss over shit. But, like, that's a simple thing. Where is my team and where am I? And then also if you're in certain billets too, where is my team and where are – where where is my team and where is my team, right? Like I'm a c- double accountable for that. That's another sure. individual action. So. Yeah, situational awareness. I'd say it's like your basic understanding of how the game works, and then it's like situational awareness, just understanding where everybody is. And then on top of that, there's like another layer. Like if we were frosting this cake, like what would be the next layer after that? You think? Yeah. <clears throat> so I I think I think it's under I think it's important to mention that you know your role in a team has many like okay. Let me let me back up. <laughs> Taking over Jump Town is a monumentous task, right? On a full server with an active with active players actively going to Jump Town, that is a difficult task. Mm-hmm. And the way to make it less difficult is you have to break it down into bite-sized chunks that you can then pass to individuals to do, right? So, for example, um, if I told you, Daft, Hey, I need you, your job, your responsibility, your individual actions are this. I need you to go to that drug dispensary. I need you to pull the drug out. I need you to put it by the door. And I need you to do it with a multi-tool. You now know your individual actions. Now, there's some other things that are sort of unspoken there, right? Mm -hmm. Like you should always be listening to what's going on around you, understanding Mm -hmm. your your environment. That's the situational awareness you're talking about, right? What is changing? Because it's constantly changing. Do I hear air? Do I hear vehicles? Do I hear bombs? Do I hear rockets? Do I hear guns? Do I hear proximity chat? Like all of that builds into your situational awareness. But at the end of the day, your job in that team is to get the drug from the dispensary to a specific location that I've that I've given you, right? Mm-hmm. That's one aspect of the team. Well, now we also have to make sure nobody comes in, right? So maybe I say, hey, Chenkov, Vesper, I need you two to be on security and you're going to watch that door. Okay. I need to know who's coming in, who's going out, when and why. And that's your responsibility. Yeah. All right. And then I'll tell them like, Hey, if you see someone looking like me in my armor, then they're friendly. If they have a name tag, obviously that's identifiable. And if they don't have a name tag, then just shoot them. 
right? If they don't have a name tag and they don't look like me, shoot them. Yep. Uh, unless explicitly otherwise, right? And so now Chenkov and Vesper have their individual actions. Not only are they looking and listening to the scenario around the, the airlock itself, right? But they're also um, paying attention to what's going on with you. Uh, like in the background, like, yes. oh shit, is Daft hungry? Okay, now my individual action is to feed Daft because I have food and I can provide him that. So I'm going to turn around, give him food, and then go back to my position, right? But I also have to let my buddy know, hey, I'm I'm going to be down for a minute, so it's just going to be you on the door. You're giving all all of this as individual actions to complete your part of the task of taking over and holding um, jump down, right? And that's just the inside. Right, and there's... There's so many, and people listening to this might go, well, this is stupid, of course. Like, no brainer. Right. But then you get shot in the fucking back. How many times has that happened to you? Because you weren't clear on this shit. Because guess what? Or more accurately, how many times has that happened to you and your entire Discord channel devolves into chaos? Yeah. (laughs) Everybody's screaming something. Everyone's saying something. It's not relevant to what's going on. Chenkov has died. There's 15 other people talking about they heard a gunshot. No fucking shit. We all heard the gunshot. Chenkov's dead. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. Now we're like dying. You know, it's, it causes chaos. So these individual actions matter. So like you can break it down even further. Like the guy doing the boxes, he's going to pick where he stands. Like I get the best sure. angle on that drug box here. I can track your beam yep. over here and do that. That's the most effective thing. Chenkov and, and Vesper in this scenario, they're doing security. It's like, they're not just going to stand in the middle of the hallway, like looking at the door. They're going to take cover. That's an individual action. Yeah. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to, they're going to find the best better, angle yeah. that keeps them alive if that door opens and they're bad guys that come through. Yes. And I'm going to pick a, the best spot that allows me to employ my weapon system better for machine yep. gunners and for grenade launch, grenadiers. Like that's important too. So understanding all that stuff. So those are the individual levels. You, you got a tasking now. Now he understands. Okay, my individual actions now encompass guarding this particular door, but me as a rifleman, I know that I need to be aware, so I'm listening to comms. Maybe in Star Citizen, you even have your game chat up, you know, so you're you're hearing what the server's saying or you're seeing what. Uh, you know, maybe you do a gear check. That's an individual action. I'm like, do I have my mags? Like, oh shit, I forgot. Yeah. Or oh no, I have a chem light that I can use. Like. So we have these this gear list for reasons, and that's all tied to individual actions. So it's all built upon. There's probably a thousand before you, uh, Echo, as a rifleman in the Marine Corps, before you could watch that 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 certain avenue of approach with your machine gun in real life. There were probably a thousand and one individual actions you did up to that point to be ready. Oh yeah, to do that individual action. So there's like preparatory yeah. individual actions. Like, does my gun work? Is my weapon right. clean? Do I have ammo? Am I hydrated? Am I in good health? Did I eat today? Like, no. <laughs> where's so my ammo? Where's my a gunner? Where's my extra yes. barrel? Can I position the bipod or mm-hmm. tripod on this particular thing? Right? Like, yeah. these are all things that are going through my head. Things that I need to know that are specific to my job as a machine gunner mm-hmm. to effectively employ that machine gun and watch that road that my team leader wants me to watch. Right? Yeah. And so while the team leader might just tell me, "Hey," echo go watch that road cool i still have a thousand and one things i need to think about so all that stuff you're thinking about in jump town that you're not really talking about those are the individual actions that we're taught like that we're here to discuss today and why they're important to think about when you're given a specific task a part of a team right yeah yeah it's uh it's not talked about much like i can't even think of a time it was talked about at this level in anything pertaining to star citizen at least um, no. On some other training levels, yeah, like, but it's this kind of new. Well, okay, I feel like let's break a new territory. Just, here. just let's go to ships real quick, and then we'll come right back to infantry mm-hmm. because it's it's applicable, right? In a ship, if you're in a dogfight, the objective in that in that dogfight is to kill the other person. There are a set task. Li- there are a list of things that you need to look at and monitor and do to be effective, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Who's the guy that we've been watching recently? Oh, Avenger uh, we'll link one. his channel. Avenger, Avenger one. one. This guy is a goddamn genius when it comes to breaking down. Like, yeah. and he's surrounded I'm a dumb... himself with other geniuses too. Like, oh yeah, he's just like, I'm a dumb it. grunt, and he makes combat flight for me super fucking easy to understand and uh-huh. apply. Um, so 
we'll go to com- so flight combat because that's what everybody wants. generally <laughs> wants to do in this game. Or even if you're listening to this podcast and you're more interested in the FPS side, here's a good like one for one transfer, right? Yeah. You've got to man- manage your shields. You've got to manage your your speed. You've got to manage your location. You've got to manage manage your pip, right? All of these are things that you do without actually saying you're doing it. And those are the individual actions you're taking to make your ship the most effective it can be in that fight, right? So if you zoom back down to the ground now and you are that dude holding security on the door at Jump Town, there are a list of things like you were saying, Daph, that have to be done. Do I have enough magazines? Mm -hmm. Do I have the right position? Is my angle, I, I do this all the time when I'm in Jump Town. If someone's like, yo, Echo, I need you to watch the door. I, you will see me move probably eight or nine times. Yeah. And like on a large scale, I'll move from door to door, angle to angle. You're checking um, out everything. He's got time. I'm checking every single angle and I'm making the calculation in my head. Okay. If a dude comes in this way, what happens? Right. What do I do? Um, okay. Well, th- I could peek. Right. Or I could yeah. just sidestep and be out of his line of sight. And then he's in my line of so these are all these individual actions that I'm running over in my head, which ties into like Ulu, but we'll get into that later, I mm-hmm. suppose, because that's part that's of the part individual of actions Absolutely. process. Um, but the, again, these are things that I am, okay, no, I, I, I value my chance of survival here. Not great, right? Like I'm going to move to another position and yeah. I'll move to another position. Can, oh, wait, okay. This door, can I use this door to my advantage somehow? If, if I stand in it, I can keep it open, but if I back off, how long does it take it to close? Does that give me time to do my reloading, which is another, re- you know, mm. uh, individual action, like looking at my ammo count and going, okay, I'm going to put a new box of 120 in my FS9. And then I could back up. How long does that take? Okay. The door closes or I can reload and then I can open the door back again. And I regain the surprise. All these things are going through my head. And the only task I've been given is to make sure nobody comes through that door. Yep. And yep. those are the individual tasks that you need to be thinking about. And applying as often as you possibly can. Don't assume that because someone has told you to do a specific task that they have a a particular spot in mind. And let's say explicitly tell you that, right? Which Mm. shame on you, small unit leaders, stop micromanaging your dudes, right? Like that's where you get in a micro. When you as as a small team unit leader are micromanaging every movement of your team members steps. It's bad. Like that's. When you get into their individual action thought process, you're you're a terrible small unit leader. Yeah, because you uh, need to be just giving the task out and saying, "Hey, mm-hmm. Echo, watch this door," and then just trust that I'm making those decisions and and go running through my individual actions. And that's why and you're saying, trained. "Okay, what's the best way to do it?" Sorry. That's why you train. No, you're exactly right. That's why you train so your individual actions are up to speed. So you correct right. your, you know, a subordinate. You correct someone in your team to improve their skill and improve those individual actions so the sum of your combined actions as a team is greater right so if i was echo's team leader this happened to me in the real marine corps with live ammo so i'll put you in the situation so if echo is my saw gunner or my machine gunner and we're we're in combat or we're whatever we're he's employing that weapon and I go and grab him by the fucking shoulder or throat or whatever, his helmet, and I scream at him for not being in the exact spot I pointed at. I'm a shitty leader. That's what happened to me. I was told to go yeah. to the hill and provide a support by fire with my machine gun. And I went there, and I didn't have a line of sight. I wasn't able to employ my weapon effectively. So I shifted 20 meters over to a different little pile of rock and found a perfect so, angle. So you, can, so you did an individual action. I did an individual you, action, you, yeah. you took your leadership's uh, tasking, and uh-huh. you said, this isn't working. I know this weapon system, and I can't see. And to be more effective, you took the yes. individual action of getting up and shifting 20 meters. Yep, and I employed my weapon system to accomplish the task that was set. And he didn't like that. He thought I was undermining him because I went mm-hmm. to a different spot. So he, during a live fire exercise, he gets up and kicks me in the back, grabs me by the throat while I'm on, <laughs> I'm on the buttstock on this thing, ripping rounds. Um, yeah, and he screamed at me. And then the, luckily it was a training opportunity. So the, there was a safety officer behind us, and he, 
Yeah, he pulled him off the line, and the next guy in line became the team lead, which was me because I was the saw gunner. So, like, it was interesting. Um, yeah, and, and yeah, you know, even though we're talking about individual actions, those are still applicable to, mm. to small unit leaders, like team leaders, squad leaders, platoon leaders, right? Like those, you have individual actions that you need to be doing that are different than what you're giving your members to do, right? Like mm. in that, in, so in that scenario, yeah, now that's not good, right? Like he did the right thing by saying, hey, go to that hill and provide machine gun cover but then he forgot to trust that you understand that that weapon system better than maybe he does right yeah or trust you that you are making a, an individual action a correction a slight correction to the original order because you had a certain um yeah like better line of sight more information than he did at that time mm -hmm. to better effectively push that so a lot of the times what I see in video games, and we'll use that as an example, is, hey, Daft, go to that hill and provide machine gun cover. And what you'll hear back is, hey, I can't see anything. What do you want me to do? That's a failure on the team member to enact an individual action to go, well, my job is to make sure that I cover their movement. I yeah. can't do it from here. I'm just going to move here 20 meters, right? Yeah. And, and so no or something, but that. Yeah. Exactly. And so the individual action from the team leader in that instance is trusting your teammates, right? Like to, to your team members to know what they're doing and understanding what, you know, what your job is to make sure you give a task that is understandable to your team member and then trust that team member to, to be it. as efficient as possible at, at completing that task. Right. You as the team member is to take that task and understand it and be as efficient as possible at eff affecting that task, right? And so that was a breakdown on that team leader's part. Um, whereas you didn't ask, you were just like, this is not working. I need to move yeah. and be effective. And I got to do it. Now. And that was correct. But the team leader was wrong because he got, I mean, we could get into like why he got like that, but obviously his leadership has been challenged in the past before, or maybe he just doesn't know how to lead. And that's also something that's a real deal. And that's why we stay away from the Milsim side of stuff, because we often see, people who are playing sergeant but have no fucking idea what that means yeah. right so then and that's what it means yeah and they essentially do the same thing we've seen that in multiple star citizen orgs where they i told you to go over here well i yeah, couldn't the, what you told me to do and the task we were assigned to do like they conflict i can't get the task yeah. you assigned me to do because you told me to do this like so one of them has to go and, and that's that's that's, that's like a, saying go yeah. look and provide security west but i want you facing east yeah yeah that's, like uh <laughs> you don't that's too much detail yeah like uh go go cover the hallway but close your fucking eyes while you do it like, yeah what? right like i can't you can't do it so like you can't do that exactly so there has to be an adjustment the individual rifleman right he has to make that call and say because ultimately you're responsible in Star Citizen, you're responsible for your own character's life, and all the you really you are. If you take cover in the middle of nowhere, you're probably going to get shot, right? Like, if you don't take an extra second to 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 make your position better, or X Y Z, those little individual actions that you do will make you survive or die. And this is what yeah. um, I think, and I might be wrong here, but Avenger One. Uh, the pilot guy, I, I think he's a veteran too, but he, he stresses that as well. You know, like he does. Yeah. It's just these, you're responsible. He know he teaches people to leave. Like if you're getting out gun, just survivability is king. So we, we as gamers, we want to go for the kill because there's no consequence, right? You're like, if I go, I, yeah. my KD ratio is already up. If I go for the kill and I get one kill and then I die, that's fine. If I get two and kills and then I die, that's cool. That's really why we're having this whole podcast, right? Is uh -huh. because Star Citizen, yes, it has a respawn function, right? But there's so much weight with that respawn. Um, and I just watched Salty Mike's, I think he does like a weekly roundup. I, it was either today or yesterday, I can't remember. But he said something that I really enjoy. Oh, God, it just left me. Um, <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, it, it, it was in terms of survival. Oh, that's what he was talking about. He was talking about like, yes, there is a respawn function, but you, then where are you going to spawn? Right? Like, then I got to take an elevator and then I got to go to a ship console and then I got to re get regeared. And then I got to like, all of that 
cost you time, right? Which has a real life impact on you. Like if you're one of those people that only gets an hour to game, you know, the, the, the reason for you to want to stay alive is very high, right? Like I only have an hour to play this game. I don't want to spend 30 minutes re-gearing and getting back to where I was. I want to spend that time getting my gun on, right? So there's this balance of like running in there like Master Chief, you know, and then also valuing that virtual life a little bit. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the ways to, to increase that survivability is understanding it, your individual actions and not just like standing in the middle of a road when you're told to, to you know, <laughs> hey, st if I told you to guard a door, anybody listening to the podcast right now, if I told you to guard a door, would your first instinct to be to stand in front of that door? No. Then you've consciously mm -hmm. made an individual action right? Like you have consciously made a decision to enact an individual action to provide yourself cover. Cause that's just yep. smart. That's common sense. Yeah. And that's, and that's typically what individual actions are, are common sense. But a lot of that people forget because they're being told to do something and they just don't know how to be led. Right. Yeah. So they, all that common sense goes out and they expect everyone to tell them exactly what to do and when mm -hmm. to do it. Or sometimes that happens just in a video game anyway. You just wait for the next mm -hmm. objective to pop up. You're like, oh, da, da, right. da. where's the waypoint? Where do I go? Is this the door I open? Yeah. You know, so it's like there's, it's usually spoon fed to us gamers, right? And and also yeah. back to the NPC thing, like in that scenario we were using, if, if you sent a player to a hilltop to cover your ass and that player gets there and he's like, I can't do this from this hill. Like I can find a better spot over here. That player can do that, but that NPC can't. Can't. Like, I, hopefully, maybe in the future, like, that'd be kind of creepy. I think we might get attacked by robots, and they'll take over the world and shit if there's AI that can make that I mean, there's logic, right? Like, the, the logic mm -hmm. in the AI can be to defend itself, right? But even that is still an NPC mindlessly enacting yeah. an individual action to preserve its own life, right? Yeah. So even an NPC could be programmed to do that. It doesn't have to necessarily be like, if you click an open field and it knows like, okay, well, I can move within five meters of that point that the player clicked and there's a rock within that five meters and they prefer the rock over the open field. That's oh, yeah. an individual action. You're right. Yeah. That's a good point. And then, so also, I mean, depending on the level of programming and, and the AI that they build, right. It will also lack a lot of a, discernment to do an individual action as well as a player can. That was my point, but that's a good point too. It's like, maybe they could be, they, they could get some yeah. NPCs up there and then we're all out of a job. <laughs> so. I, I, well, I've been scripting a lot in Arma lately. So like oh. AI and logic and all that is, <laughs> you know, uh, kind of at the forefront of my mind right now, but it, it is, po it's not impossible, but at the end of the day, you're right. A player is always going to be able to make a better decision over something like an NPC mm -hmm. who has a set is constrained by a set written list of human rules yeah. that it can do. Whereas a player can think outside the box, right? Like, and what we're not suggesting you to do as a team member, right? This is not an individual. Let me give you an example. Of what's not an individual action. When your team leader says, go watch that door, right? Or your leadership or whoever's in charge just says, watch that door. And you just decide to look out a window because you feel like that's better than watching the door. That is not a good, that is an individual action, but that's a bad one. It mm. doesn't do anything for your team, right? You don't, you're not gaining any information by looking out that window. Yes, if the window is right next to the door, sure, look out the window. But if you're looking out a window that's in an opposite direction than the door, like you're not securing that door, you're watching yeah. the window. So that's a bad individual action to do. Yeah, there right? are right individual actions and wrong, right? <laughs> so, mm -hmm. And like yeah. your individual actions, the point we're getting at here is that they can change per scenario, but there's always a set of baseline individual actions that should be, you know, conditioned into you. And like right. they, they are. Well, for us, right, security is a thing. So when yeah. we patrol, we everyone is told to keep an eye like head on a swivel, right? Mm -hmm. Fucking, if I hear that term one more time, I'll probably fucking jump out yeah. the second story window. Mm -hmm. But, but head on true. a swivel, you know what I mean? Like as you're patrolling, stop looking forward. What, okay, if you really think about the common sense of walking in a, in a line and looking at the back of the head of the guy in front of you, what are you really doing? Nothing. 
But if you turn your head to the left and you turn your head to the right, now what have you done? Yeah, you just increase the field of view of your whole team. That's all exactly. Important. Those are all. And if you do that things. in a consistent manner as you're patrolling, you are now visually securing your area, and it allows you to pop up and see threats faster when you're doing that versus just staring at the back of your 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 buddy's head, right? Right. Yeah, and those are all basic. Like we'll call I'll call them rifleman individual actions. Like the basic sure. person, if you're going to engage in combat in the game or in real life or wherever. Because they're all very similar. That situational awareness, like what, where am I looking? Where am I putting my gun? Like where, where am I resting my weapon? Do I have a sling on? Like those things it, it, matter. On here's mic. another one I want to talk about that yeah. we do. I'm I'm guilty of doing so. Easy privateers. I'm not yelling at anybody in specific, but <laughs> we like to do bunkers, right? To sort of rehearse, not rehearse, but sort of like work on some of these things, right? It's not yeah. a training. It's just a, Hey, let's go do bunkers, play together, learn each other, learn how each other reacts to certain things and also play the game and earn some money. Right. It's fun. Mm-hmm. Um, when we're coming up to that bunker door, everybody stops. Right. And waits for, for like, for what though? Okay. What next? Right. Like we got to the door. What next? Now I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Right. But in the context of what we're doing, for example, right now, there are no enemies on the top level or around the outside. Now, this is where you can get real in trouble, break it, make, make it some bad habits. But what you can do is you can understand the context that you're in and and apply an individual action based on that. We know that information that, that is known information to us. So as long as I know that the rest of my team is moving behind me, because as a point man, one of your individual actions, responsibilities really, is to keep your eyes forward, right? Mm -hmm. It's you are the front of the formation. You need to see what's going on. So you shouldn't be turning around and looking where everybody's at. You should just trust your team members that they're behind you and they're also moving. So when you stop, they're also going to stop right? Like that's a known, that should be a known. Yeah. So we talk about flow and CQB. What's wrong with flowing into that, knowing the information, you know, now, if there, if there, if if it's a player that, you know, that you're going to get a a group of people inside of a bunker, that's different. That's different context. That's different information. Those are unknowns. You may want to wait, right? Yeah. But again, some things you could do when you're walking up, you, when you're walking up to that hole, you can see in there. So anything that moves, you can shoot at, right? And just with a step left or right, you could put yourself offline to that door and protect yourself. But why give up that information when you can see in there, mm-hmm. right? And so for me, when I'm walking up to that, it's a, it's a decision that I'm making to go, okay, is there anything in there? I don't see anything. I'm going to keep going. Okay, I see a threat. Bang, 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 bang. I'm stepping offside a little bit because yeah. there's a threat in there. You and know what I mean? teammates catch uh, up. Yeah. And those are my individual actions. Now, if I know that I'm just doing NPC bunkers, I might just walk up in there and I, my muscle memory is to always dig that left corner. Right. And always dig that right corner or left corner when I go in and I expect the guy behind me to be doing the same thing, but on the opposite side, right. The basics of, of CQB. So in that little explanation, I've talked about my individual actions, my responsibilities as a point man, the things that I decide that I want to do. Right. And then, uh, the trust that I have in my team members to, to know that they're doing the same thing. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It, cause it's a culmination of everyone's individual actions. Right. right. And now my individual actions have kept the, the, the patrol going forward in the direction that we need to go. Um, it's kept the front of the patrol secure. Right. And then, Um, I've, I've made the decision as the point man to go in. I don't need a team leader to tell me to go in. I don't need that. I I'm a human being who understands that if there's danger in there, I'm going to need more people. If not, I'm going to go in and I'm just going to expect my team to follow me. Yeah. Unless you received explicit instructions. Hey, hold on the door. Right. Oh, okay. I'll do that. Now Um, on the team leader side of that, if you're telling your guys to hold on a door every fucking time, don't do that. Right. Let them make those decisions on their own it's their lives not yours yes. now if they're making stupid decisions go ahead and talk to them but let them make those decisions 90 percent of the time and only in a few moments a handful of times should you be like stop this is this is an sop when we hear shooty we stop at door right that, that's an sop yeah 
Exactly. So like there's there's always there's always reasons why. Like there's so many if ands or buts that it's hard to like be definitive with this stuff. Right. So there's always exceptions. The only time I would say like stack on the door is if we were coordinating with another unit for something. Right. You know, or whatever. But if it's like that's the objective, we're here hitting it. We're all close by. The most I would say is like, hey, point man, slow down. Yeah. Because he's getting too far ahead and he's not looking back, right? You were saying he's weapons up, he's moving. Like point, he's doing his job. Point man, slow down. We can't support you. So yep. then he gets the, And goes, I've been oh, told oh, that okay. many times as oh, a point dude, man. Totally. Oh shit. Okay. Scroll scroll dude. scroll wheel down a little bit. Yeah, when you're point man, sometimes you just feel like you're John like you're just John Wick. You're like, I'm fucking Jason Bourne. Let's go. You, know, like, you have an impossible task, right? <laughs> survive. Yeah. It's hard for a point man to survive. Yeah, you're amped up because you know you're gonna be the first one to trigger the bomb through the door or you're gonna get shot. Yeah. Or whatever. I've spent a lot of time as a point man in my Marine yeah. Corps career. <laughs> Dude, for some reason, too, they thought short people were better point mans for some reason. Like, I don't know. Like uh, okay. if, my, if, my job, one of my jobs in Iraq <laughs> was to drive. We had Humvees, shitty oh, Humvees. Were you lead And Vic? then I had, we had the, yeah, yeah, I was lead Vic. But we had, like, the new Cougar, right? The 4 by Cougar. And that was, like, it's an anti-IED. It's not an anti-IED. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. But that was my job was to to drive in front. And this is before we had, like, all this cool technology like that goes on the front of the vehicles now. Yeah, right. Like, all the, the mind finder and all this other. Like, we had, this was before even the EM, I think. So, oh, <laughs> literally, wow. my job was just to drive and absorb bombs. Yeah. So, you know, like, and that, it's just. That it is what it is. That was my job, and I had to do it, and I did it well, and I'm alive. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Whatever. But individual um, actions, right? That, right. That well, but uh, so to on that, right? Individual actions. I knew what an ID looked like, and that was part of my job. Driving that vehicle was to keep an eye out for those those markers and indicators, and stop the patrol when I thought, you know, that could be something. Yes, there were times that you just ran the fucking thing over. But there were other times where it's like, mm, that's a pretty dark spot, big dark spot. I'm going <laughs> to, I want to survive today. You know what I mean? And so all that helped keep the rest of the convoy secure. So my individual actions in that truck with my team, with my team leader, my vehicle commander, passing that information back to the, you know, the, the convoy commander, like all of that, combined together to make us an efficient team so we could get to where we needed to go and do what we needed to do. Yeah. It's a, it's a beautiful thing when everybody understands their layers and yeah. And it, this ties in with the last episode we did with comms and communications. And part mm -hmm. of that communications is having a TTP or an SOP, a standard operating procedure or tactics, yeah. techniques and procedures that are all understood by all. Those are all mm -hmm. individual actions. You understand what, what, what you do, what what you are as the cog in the wheel, right? That and in and itself is goes. an individual action, right? Yeah, being I am just up. a rifleman this time, so my job isn't to tell people what to do, or order tasks, right? Mm -hmm. It's to be told what to do, and then individual and then action execute. my way to completion of that task. Yeah. yeah, and execute it with all your ability and skills. Yep. That's why you were in that spot, right? And, uh, this is a really tough subject to talk about because we're giving pointed examples, but really what we want you to understand is the mentality behind an individual action and why it's important, right? So don't take what we're saying here and apply it directly to your organization or, or, or self. Take the, the theory of what we're talking about, right? The common yes. sense of, of completing a task that has been issued to you and apply that, right? What is the common sense for the task that's been given to me? And how can I make my, how can I increase my survivability? Step one. And then step two, how can I increase my team's survivability? Yep. Right. And that's really what an individual action is. Really? That's, that's watered down. That's a great explanation. So we'll, we'll tie it back into star citizen here. Um, we've talked about specific individual actions, like billet shit like that. Right. Like if you're mm -hmm. a team leader or if you're a grenadier, uh, or a pilot, like your individual actions are going to be different, but the core, let's say, let's talk about core individual actions as a player in star citizen. What okay. can you do to be ready for a fight or just ready to defend yourself? Even if you're like a minor or uh, like whatever, you know, let's say you get boarded by pirates. Like at some point in your star citizen career, combat will find you. 
If you're if you're trying to avoid it, don't. So embrace it. Okay. You're out there. How can you be ready? Individual actions, go. Whatever you're doing, security is the most important thing. I don't care if you're a miner mining in a mul- uh, prospector by yourself, or if you're in a multi-person org with many many elements. 360 degree security is important at all times. I, I read all the times in Spectrum like, oh, this is bullshit. I get, uh, I, I get, I get griefed all the time as a miner. That's not and it's my because ship. that person is all they want to do is mindly press buttons, right? Much in the same way that a person who's into FPS mindly wants to click pixels. If you are playing the game of Star Citizen and you're not worried about security all the fucking time, <laughs> you're gonna die. Yeah, or you'll get uh, boarded, you'll get your ship stolen, uh, you'll pay pirates. Like, Right. Right, if you don't plan for these things, then you fail to plan. Like, if you if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail, right? So, like, what, what can you do as an individual action? Like, let's say you are a miner going out to mine, and you just loaded sure. up your ship, you got, you're coming back from the kiosk. What's something you could do to enhance your security or individual actions so, to make sure you don't get something gay? I like inherently do now just it's like a muscle memory of mine is when I get into an elevator, I immediately turn around and walk backwards into it. And the reason why I do that is because I know some asshole is going to try to fucking sneak onto my elevator. Yeah. And if I'm not paying attention, they're going to board my ship. Right. I know that's a, a common a tactic with some pirate orgs is they will just follow people because they know people aren't paying attention, right? They have a low situational awareness, which means their security level is very low. And they think, well, nobody's here. I didn't see anybody. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't see anybody in your field of view. That doesn't mean anybody's not there. Right. Yeah. And so call it whatever you want, but I always back into an elevator. I don't know if you've noticed me do that or not, but I'm less likely to do it if I'm with other privateers, yeah. but most of the time you view the elevator. And no one's in there. I and then it. you back up. And, and then like, I turn around and back up no and make sure I back into the back furthest corner I can. And, and then you press your button. I check yeah. the elevator. I do this. I, I religiously do this every time I get into another. Yeah. It is very <laughs> exhausting. But I have to because I know players are going to be assholes like that. It's true. And so. Anytime you have any ship that could be boarded, you're like. Uh. Yeah. Any anything I do anything in the verse, whether it's flight combat or FPS or mining or whatever, I always do that, and that's me doing an individual action for situational awareness and security, right? Yeah, just being aware of who's on your landing pad, right? And some pirates, yeah, getting, they're getting crafty, man. They they'll dress up like NPCs on the docking port, like down, you mm-hmm. know, in the hangars, and they'll they'll sneak yeah. onto your ship that way. So it's like. Especially with those big ships where everything's susceptible. Like you, it's like a 10 second timer on the Carrick ramp, you know? So you're like, Ugh. yeah. And people just run in there, mindlessly press it, and they run up to the cockpit. So, like, if you time it right, there's a lot of skilled players that can get sneak in if you are not aware. So, the first one is like awareness and security, right? Those, those are huge. Mm-hmm. Um, also, uh, I think equipment is a big one too, especially now yeah. because oh, it's yeah. physicalized. And you might not have your equipment if you're at a different space station. Um, setting your that's another thing I do. Is a huge is I do a PCC and PCI yeah. every time. For the, the PCC is a pre-combat check, and then a PCI is a pre-combat inspection. So like it's a fancy military term for checking to make sure you have equipment. Yep, it's a uh, an inspection is like okay, everyone, no shit, line up. We're inspecting you, and we're going to critique you. A pre-combat check is like, hey, uh, we're walking through the gate right now. Check your shit. Like, let's line yep. up, check your shit one last time. Cool, done. An inspection's like, okay, what's in this pouch? <laughs> right? Like, no shit. Yeah. What's in here? Jump up and down. Why is that zipper jingling? Like, right. why do you have a shiny f- metal orifice right here? <laughs> orifice, not orifice. A shiny metal surface. But I mean... In yeah. the game, that's a check can be a personal thing, and an inspection can be a, a an element thing, right? Yeah. Like you you a could friend. you could do an inspection on your buddy that isn't an asshole thing. Like, a hey, dude, inspection. I don't see any med pens on your leg. You know, or uh, has this happened to you? And it probably has. If you've listened, if you're listening, type in the chat if this has happened for you. Like, comment. But uh, you think you have a helmet on because the game shows you on your screen that you have a helmet on, but for some reason the server didn't click, and you didn't hover your mouse over it to sh- see that it was grayed out. So according to you and your eyes that you should trust, you don't have a fucking helmet on or you do have a right. helmet on. And then you walk outside and you're like, ah, and you die. 
Um, but mm-hmm. I've been saved by Dr. Fork in the Lung seems to save me every time. Or Lord Lord Vitches, <laughs> he changed his name. It's always him. He's like, Daft, you don't have a helmet. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, yeah, I do. He's like, no, you don't. And I check it, you and no that helmets. helmet's bugged, so I have to put on a different one. Um, yeah. Saved my life. Thank you. Thank you, Lord V. <laughs> and that's an example of a, that's like a, I mean, that is a pre-combat inspection, right? Like Agreed. he has done a visual look at you and went, something's wrong. You don't have a helmet. <laughs> yeah. I don't need to tell you that you have all, yes, Daft, you have all your magazines, you have all your med pens, you have all your chest equipment and you, but you don't have a helmet. Just tell me what I don't have. That's a pre-combat inspection. That's you looking at someone else and going, Hey man, you're missing a piece of equipment. Yeah. It's an individual action that directly benefited your team, right? You being aware. Um, So that's that it's all situational awareness. It's all security. They're all kind of bleed over into each other. It's a beautiful thing. So, um, so that's one thing you could do. What else could improve a player's readiness in Star Citizen? I mean, uh, did we discuss inventory? Oh yeah, we're, that's yeah, that's what I was getting at. Is gear, gear check, inventory. Yeah. Like inventory management is huge now. Like I don't think people realize how big that is. If you're trying to do anything coordinated with a team, right? Yeah. If if uh, right, we, we already established during in the early parts of the podcast that a team's the outcome of that team, whether it's successful or not, is based off of the sum of each individual's actions, right? Yes. So if you have to be at this location at this time to conduct this operation and two of your team members are across the verse, like you're at Microtech, they're at Hurston, right off the bat... Boom, your team's success has been delayed because of some individual actions. And sometimes, to to give some players some credit, sometimes the game is ruthless. Your worst enemy in Star Citizen is not the NPCs. It's not even other players. It's fucking Chris Roberts' nightmare, right? Like, it's it's the coding of the game that will fuck you over. So, just to, you know, it's not always your fault, but... It kind of is. If you forgot to log off at the correct location that everybody was planning on meeting (laughs) and you don't have the right equipment. Now, your individual actions, bad actions, have completely costed the team time and effectiveness and -hmm. also real world time because now I'm not hanging out with my fiance or playing with my dogs or, you know, some people got kids and work and. I only had this much time to play, and now we got to wait th- even this much more time for just people to get to the right place in the right spot, right? Yep. Huge pet peeve of mine, by the way. And it's exponentially getting worse because the game is being realized more fully now by Chris Roberts and his glorious staff. So it's it's paramount. If you're just running and gunning, you're the Mandalorian doing your thing, just rooting tooting. That's cool. You can you can have your in, your shit locked down and go go have all the fun. But if you're trying to stack individual actions on top of each other to equal the total sum of like some awesome fucking shit, like we are, that really really matters. It could be really good or really negative. Yeah, it's a, you know to to be selfish like that is you know, and we're listen. I'm guilty of it. Uh, I know everyone else is guilty of it, but it's really at the end of the day, this is an out of game individual a- action is like genuinely giving a fuck about the people you're playing with <laughs> yeah. and wanting to be prepared and understanding that they don't have the same amount of time set aside as you do. Right. Like if you just assume that without asking, um, I bet you find yourself, I, for example, I took, fuck, we had a, we were doing something on a Sunday and mm-hmm. that week prior it took, like I did not have much time to play the game throughout the week, but the time that I did have, I did go in and I did move my equipment and stage myself. And it took me like three or four days. Cause I had like 30 minutes here, an hour there, and you know, yeah. fucking loading into the games takes 15 minutes, just period. So, you know, it was, it was little bits and pieces that I did individual actions I made to, to ensure that I wasn't wasting anybody else's time. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's frustrating when you do that and other people don't, but if you continue to do that and be an example, like, you know, you'll see other people start to follow and trace as well. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Imagine, um, and some of you that are in orgs or leading orgs, or you're trying to build one, whatever the case is, or you're in our organization, 
you've seen that before. And it's like, hey, at, at this time, we're linking up to play to do this particular thing. And, yeah. you know, let's say it's like 11 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. And then next thing you know, 12, 1230 rolls around. And we're still waiting on one to two to three people. Or yep. we're still getting staged and we're still waiting. Um, obviously, you should never slow the group down for like one individual, right? You know, but never. It does yeah. happen nah, from time to time. Cut cut that person off and, and move on with the group, right? Yeah. Like they can catch up. Yeah. And if you are that person because the game ate your shit, the game didn't work, or like you just got back in town or whatever, be mindful of that. Be like, hey, I don't have yeah. any of my gear ready. And I'm clear across the solar system in this game. So, like, you guys go ahead without me. I'll join you. I'll stay. I'll hang out mm-hmm. in voice comms and hang out. But, like, if you're expecting people to wait for your ass, like, that's just bad. That's just that's just a bad individual it's action. It's a bad mentality. It's, it's, yeah. yeah, we it's all got lives. Etiquette. We want to we wanna get in the game, and we want to do cool stuff because this game allows us to do a lot of cool shit. But it's mm-hmm. very tedious. We're starting to feel it right now. And especially with this patch, what are we, 3.16.31? I don't fucking know. But it's like... It's it, 3.15.2, I think. Not, yeah, that's there right. is no 3.16. We went back to 3.15. It's like some other build. Yeah. Um. Yeah, this, this patch has been rough. And we've had some rough patches in the past as a Star Citizen community. But, like, it's been rough. Um, and it just, it kind of kills people's desire to play the game when, you know, you spend 40 minutes getting all your shit prepared and then you log back in and it's not there. You're like, Oh my God. Yeah. And now the whole group's like, well, we'll catch you later, man. Which, You're like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. And I love that we're moving in this direction in star citizen. And I guess this is more or less a note for the devs. Like stop doing that to us. Yeah. It's really, it's, uh, we want to play your game. Like, I know at least us two have a thousand dollars into this game. Plus mm. like we want to make this game, ha- but you sometimes like, I don't, <laughs> sometimes you make it hard to play your game and just please stop doing that. <laughs> yeah. I like, we get it. It's in development still, but like, sure, sure. I got it. We still should have some stability. You know, I don't know. It's a double edged yeah. sword. We bitch. Yeah. We're going to bitch. <laughs> yeah. We're going so, to. Yeah. It's just, I mean. Yeah, those are, I think, just to reiterate that, inventory management and having your equipment in the right place is, like, huge. If you want to do anything yeah, organized, I, right, you go. I think you should talk about, like, the little tip you, like, gave me, which I think is phenomenal, by oh. the way. Like, uh, one, the game has allowed us to do that, all yes. right? And then, two, the application or the mechanic of that is just incredible, like. Okay. Yeah, let's talk about some inventory yeah. management tips. Because that's an individual action that that directly affects your readiness. Absolutely. So, first thing you can do, um, if you know you're going to be operating or playing in an area, wherever your group is, or if you got your shit scattered everywhere, the first thing I would recommend to everybody listening is do a character reset. Yeah, it's hard. Oh, my reputation. You still have your reputation, but you got to go redo some missions to like get it back. Whatever, do it. You'll thank me. So go reset your character to a place. Um, then all your gear is in one location and you can go, oh, okay, great. And then to alleviate more stress and more clutter, get all of your subscriber shit, the stuff that you don't use. Like I have like 5,000 flashlights that I'm never going to go through, right? I got all this subscriber. I'm never going to wear a top hat and a monocle. Like I wore yeah. it one time to be funny and I was like, everyone's done this. I was like, that's not that funny. <laughs> so take all your subscriber shit and your plushies or whatever you don't want in your inventory um, and like put them on a spaceship like a C2 and like put it on cruise control and backspace or like blow it up like send it away and blow it up claim it lose it so now all your clutter is gone also another tip buy very few backpacks and buy separate colored ones because then you if you played escape from tarkov you can pull some special some backpack management shit um so this is the tip i was talking about with echo um it's just yeah i was like (laughs) i'm not putting anything on a c2 and blowing it up that no all your subscriber (laughs) shit that you don't use that's what i'm gonna do that's with just go okay yeah it's just cluttering your inventory like top hats and monocles Mm -hmm. put all that shit on a c2 and blow it up and you'll never worry. Oh, about it you know, I, t- to that point though, right? Like, so mm. my the way I manage that inventory is I use the actual filters. 
and you can get pretty granular with the filters. You can. And so I spend the time to do that instead of right. Like uh, two ways. Neither one is right. Neither one is wrong. Sure. Sure. So that that's one tip I would suggest. You don't have to do that one, but the backpack one is, is genius, right? So through oh, this trial is great. And error, that and the equipment, right? Uh, what, what equipment? Putting the equipment, like in. your chest rig yeah. and your leg. So yeah, if you, in our org, we have uniforms, right? We have a set set of armor that we wear so we can identify each other. So what we do is, and Echo has been doing this practice as well. We'll, we'll get a, a, an amount of armor. And we'll go buy all these things that we use in bulk, magazines, uh, grenades, chem lights, uh, med pens, all that shit, water, food and water. Food, drink. Everything. Yeah. And it takes some time, but you go have a logistics day. And you go load each set of armor because you can right-click on it and open that chest compartment. You can see what's in there. You can open a backpack and do that. So I, I buy some very colorful backpacks, like the bright red and yellow ones, and I use those to store all of my cluttered items. Like if I want attachments for weapons, I open this big backpack. It's all in there. If I want um, you know, ammo or something like that, you can store them preemptively. So I have kits built out, and all I got to do is wake up. I, I, let's say I die in combat or whatever. I spawn in the, in the, uh, the medical place. I, I wake up, throw, uh, take off your gown, <laughs> drop it on the floor right away. If you haven't figured that out yet, do that. Drop your gown off and then throw on an undersuit and a helmet and then double click your armor. And you already know, because you've done this all preemptively, you know what's in that chest piece, you know what's in your legs, all those compartments. And then you toss a backpack on and grab two weapons. That's it. A pr two it primaries. So I double click. It's really cool too because items. I mean I've been able to stage for this event we have coming up, and I have I think four sets of armor, like four s complete kit sets. Complete kits, pockets so, filled, and everything, right? Arm park pockets filled. I have food, water, food and drink in all of them. I have you know ammo attachments, multi -tools. chem lights, med guns, multi tools, all of that stored in in chunks, right? Like I and and my leg armor is the same. My chest armor is the same. My backpacks are the same. Mm -hmm. And I know when I when I die on this, if I die in this event and I respawn, all I got to do is throw that undersuit, that helmet, pick any chest, any leg, any arms, throw them on and a backpack and a gun, and I'm good to go. Yep. And it takes me 15 seconds to get kitted out instead of sitting there. Yeah, double okay, clicking. Move this over. Dragging it over. This over. Right, because I'm gonna have an eventual time while I'm I'm on my way to the the next you know, uh, to the respawn point, right? Like to 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 reinforce, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have time to place that attachment on my gun, pre-position the the shit on my kit where I want it, right? Like yes, and so but the, but the big part is is like you could just it's literally a grab and go kit, right? Like you yeah. grab it and you go, and it's then like as you have time, pack. you sort of. Build it, yeah. You, it's already yep, prepped. You build out stage. your kit as you're moving. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. And what, and it takes a lot of. Not only is it like to build less headache for you, but also you're now not waiting on Echo, who's like, "Hold on, guys. Yeah, I can't. I, got, I gotta I, find. I, I can't, can't find, find that one suppressor. I got a fucking I million plushies because I I involved myself on a spectrum post that everyone was laughing about. Who's got the most plushies? Now they're forever <laughs> in my account, and I gotta scroll through them. No, just do all that shit. Yeah, you know, like. This is the eventual reality of the game that we're playing. Like, if you don't like it, now is the time to get out. Exactly. That's not going to get any easier, right? No, like, no, no, that no. level of coordination and individual actions for your equipment <laughs> can save so much fucking time for you and your group, right? Yeah. Uh, and it unfortunately requires you to spend a day or some time managing your inventory, right? Like, there's yeah. a whole game dedicated to inventory management. Like, I'm pretty sure that's the whole reason the game was created. It's called Tarkov. Everybody familiar with that <laughs> yeah, game? Yeah, yeah. It's, a <laughs> it's just it's just a backpack management game. That's it. That's it all is. it is. You know what I mean? With this, with and, the that, and those guys love it. doing that. Like, oh, I got a M4. Yeah. Four grip oh, dude, when I was playing Tarkov, oh, man, and you get, the, you get to expand your inventory, Everybody. you're like, oh, I get it. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's a lot of people that are gonna be like, "Fuck you, Echo." Tarkov's great. It sucks. It's the worst game in the world. But yeah. whatever. I like uh, but that's I like the game we're playing now, right? Like that. That it those is. are it's space Tarkov, man. And if you think it's gonna get easier, hell no. Mining's gonna be like that. Mm -hmm. FPS combat's gonna get more granular like that. And it's cool because it's spawning these like jobs, 
if you will, right? Like if you love Tarkov, you are the inventory management king. You can come to Star Citizen and like spooge everywhere, fucking yeah. managing your inventory, you know? And dude, uh, or, or talking... managing the inventory for other people and then pre placing that and like, boom, <laughs> yeah. here you go. Here's now a logis- yeah, lo- like I would hire logistician you. job. I would hire you to come manage my inventory if you're that good. Yeah. Right? Um, what I was going to say, oh yeah, so the, I was talking to another another org, right? And these guys, they pride themselves on being the best Star Marine players ever, which is cool. You know, they're yeah. out there yeah, doing FPS yeah. shit. They're running and jumping over shit, doing like 360 no scopes, like just dominating Star Marine and all like five people to play it, you know? <laughs> like, so cool. But Rip like, Star Marine. yeah, and I like Star Marine. It's a good place to go get used to guns and shit. But yeah. they, they fully admitted, they're like, yeah, we, they're like, if we get in a firefight with anybody, like, we're confident we can win it. And I was like, well, like, you first got to get to that firefight in the PU. In, in the Persistent Universe, like, how are you going to get there? And they're like, yeah, well, that's that's where we know we struggle because it takes us, like, an hour and a half to get organized in the game. And I'm like, and that's the I'm, their skills are useless. Yes, exactly. And that's yeah. the whole point of this, like, individual action, feeding into team actions, feeding into squad actions, yes. feeding into platoon actions, feeding into command and fleet actions, right? Like, all of this stuff is iterative. And it takes time, but you can you can help start that by doing some of these things, yeah. these individual actions. And it just it has what we call a second and third order effect. It does. So if you're the first order, right, of a, like a, the first effect, your squad, right, your team, your squad could be the second and third orders uh, that are affected, the elements that are affected, right? Or if you're a fleet command leader, like a fleet commander, right, and you you aren't like you're micromanaging that second and order second and third order effects fall onto you know your wings and your and your infantry and like they're all mis- discombobulated because you're unable to give accurate and clear and concise orders right so all of this stuff has a ripple effect and anybody who thinks that whatever they do in the game doesn't affect anyone else uh, especially if you're an organization you're 1000% wrong and you probably need to go back to Zelda yep like the original NES Zelda where you could do whatever the fuck you want. It doesn't affect anybody but you. Exactly. Yeah. Like a, like a, a thousand positive individual actions compound to something oh, great. Yeah. A thousand exponentially shitty individual actions do the same thing in the negative sense. If you have yep. 20 people in your org and 10 of them are missing a certain item because a, the game ate it or because they forgot it. That shit compounds, rolls downhill, right? If yeah. I'm not at this right place, if my individual, if I, if I'm, if I'm looking away for two seconds, and that's when the dude pops out and blasts us, when I was supposed to be watching, that compounds. Now this whole can of shit just opened up, and we lost four people, yep. and we got to respawn and restart. You know, then you got to do that whole logistics thing over, yeah. and it's great, right? Like you can cut corners, like, well, fuck it, I'm not gonna die. I'm the best FPS player in Star Citizen. And then you get there and you die to a bug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's more likely to kill you and than you, somebody. Yeah. yeah. And you made a shortcut on your logistics. You mm-hmm. now just fucked your team because yeah. they're down a team member. Or now like, you've got to oh. spend another 30 minutes getting all your gear together. And, and But if you – you listen, man, Star Citizen is one of those games where it's – it. I think – Space Tomato said it. It is a thinking man's game. It is not a clicky pixel clicking game. Nope. It is not a inventory. Sh- it's not a spreadsheet manager. It is not an FPS game. It is not a mining game. It is not. It is not any of those things. No. It is a thinking man's game. Absolutely. And the person that can think the best, or the group of people that can think the best, will always win, regardless of skill, regardless of anything else. It is. I think it's uh it's a thinking man's game and it's it's like a logistical simulator. That's it. If you're if you're talking about ground troops, it's a little less logistical if you're just flying in one solar system in a spaceship, right, to go do space mm-hmm. combat. That's less thinking. You prep your ship and then you're good. You gotta make sure right. you're fueling. But there is still good. some prep there. There's there is. still some thought into that. Am I gonna take the Sentinel or am I gonna take the Super Hornet? There is a lot EFTs. of thought. You're right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I there's still corrected. like <laughs> It's a thinking man's game. It is. And hey, real quick, uh, Mal, how are we doing on time? We're about an hour and ten. Oh, perfect. Um, so I think we should wrap it up. 
here at this point. We talked about inventory and logistics. I sure. think next episode, episode 12, we should discuss the OODA loop. What do you think? Oh, yeah. OODA loop. Like, OODA I, I, we'll loop. combine that with some other stuff. We could probably get deep into yeah. that. Like, OODA loop is a really cool it's tool huge. to tie in individual actions. Right. And, right? Like, like, you went how many years in the military? You've heard this concept preached differently, probably. No, but I it haven't. Was like, I, 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 dude, I spent ten years in the Marine Corps, and I still contract now for the DoD. And I, it wasn't until you said it, like six, that I was ago. like, yeah, like holy fucking shit, that totally. Mm -hmm. And it just, like, I try to be a professional warrior. That's just kind of my job, my real life job that I do. And so I always look for ways to sort of improve my thought process and how I apply mechanics and understand mechanics and things like that. And you know, one of those big things for me was muscle memory. That was Afghanistan completely clicked for me, right? Like what, what that is and why it's important and how I should strive to get muscle memory. But then like the thought process of my individual actions, like I knew what individual actions were, but, and, and like what it was to me, it was just common sense. Right. But now there's a real like process, a real equation for coming up with mm. that individual action. And that's what the OODA loop is. And it's actually kind of cool and it can be applied at like so many different fucking levels. It can. And guess what? I only learned about it like two years ago, <laughs> two, yeah. a, a couple years ago. But yeah, it's it's a mind blowing philosophy on decision making. So if you want to sure. look it up and be ready for the next episode, it's O O D A. It's an acronym, OODA loop. We'll just leave it at that. And loop being a, a circular loop, right? It, it, you know. Yeah. So it's, we'll, we'll it's talk a repetitive about. thing. Yes, it continuously. Is a decision making process. Programmers so, out there will know what we're talking about. It's yeah, a loop. It's a loop. Um, but yeah, I think we we call it right there, dude. You got any other caveats? Any other no, I fucking of? love each and every single one of you, though. Thank yes. you. Yes. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for bring the comments. Holy shit, man! The whole thing. We appreciate all the Reddit love. Uh, everywhere, man. It's Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks. And, and dudes, if you guys got um. Anybody who's playing Star Citizen, you know, spread this this podcast out there. If you could do us a solid. Yeah. You know, we're not going to sit no, here. No, just the little... word of mouth is crazy. Yeah. Like, we don't advertise at all. And it's just nah. nuts that, like, I'm I'm overwhelmed and humbled by by uh, by everybody's participation in this in this podcast. So thank you. Uh, it makes it like, like I'm legitimately giddy uh, to get up here and record this stuff because it's I know. it's fun to talk about. And it's fun to read everybody's feedback on it. Yeah. And Echo, I, we, we we call each other in real life all the time. Be like, let's talk about these things. <laughs> all the time. What are we doing? We talk about our org and Star Citizen. Like, it's cool. So I love the friendships yeah. we've got from this, our org, and, 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 and the stuck in the nail. And shout out to Mal for producing. Thank you, Mal. Blue Form Media, uh, thank you. Blue Form Media providing this studio and all this shit and this mic I'm talking into. So appreciate it. Um, yeah. That's all for us. So uh, this has been Episode 11. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this helps you increase your effectiveness and readiness with your individual actions. And uh, Echo and I will we'll see you motherfuckers on the ground. On on the ground. On the ground, bitches. We're gonna get it at some point, I think. It will be. Yeah, I didn't really tee you up for that. Sorry. <laughs> Cue the music. Cue the music. <laughs>